Good morning, folks, or good afternoon, or whatever time of the day it is for you while you're watching this. We just got out to one of the job sites we were working on. Um, it's a pretty cool one. I'm not going to be able to do this all of the time, but uh, it's just kind of the first glance for y'all at some of the work. I uh, got a lot of comments in the last, or I guess one of the videos, where I asked if y'all like to see this kind of stuff, and so uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you. Again, if you're kind of new here, uh, I was working full-time in town for a great company. Decided to go out on my own and do my own thing. So, more focused on the hay. And then um, we're going to start doing, or my wife and I started this company, Little Metal Building Company. And so, uh, we're, gonna, we're getting after it. And so, I figured I'd show you. This is kind of going to be the first one uh, where y'all get to see one of our job sites. This is a 63 by 63. And uh, this barn here was built by German immigrants in the mid 1800s we don't really know the year but we're assuming the 1850s 1860s and uh, pretty cool this is uh, actually friends of ours but uh, they're they're uh, developing this ranch of theirs here in Bull Verde and they're turning it into uh, home sites large acre home sites and this is gonna be like a clubhouse area and uh, so yeah it's pretty cool these are 8 inch by 13 pound I-beams for the columns and the rafters up there. And so it was a little tricky. We didn't really exactly hit. We had a game plan, a pretty good game plan, but it was kind of a uh, learn as you go, kind of figure things out because um, we wanted to frame around this building. And uh, they're obviously going to use this as a focal point for when the building's done. But uh, pretty cool. Pretty dead gum cool. So this is a, uh, obviously we have a porch curb here or uh, you know it's lowered here with the you know falling off so they can have retaining walls and this is going to be the main drive coming into the neighborhood and head all the way to the back but uh, you know they have retaining walls they poured there for flower beds and I don't know if they're gonna do games or whatever but uh, you can see here that it's a center style type building or center aisle, center aisle st style barn if you will or roof line so we have two lean-to style structures off to the side and then obviously our main structure. Um, the eaves are 19 foot and the peak is roughly 27. It's 8 on 12 pitch. Um, and then of course these are 1 on 12 lean-to structures or wings off the sides if you will. So everything on the si other side of that uh, curb there will be interior. This is the porch and uh, same on this side. I don't know what their plans are as far as layout. Uh, but yeah, pretty exciting. Eight inch, 13 pound I beam, um, everywhere. And then eight inch two by two and a half inch purlin up top for the roof. Um, and that's basically the gist of the structure. Um, they are doing the, they're finishing out the walls themselves. So they're going to frame inside of our structure, uh, as far as the, uh, walls go, except we are walling the, uh, upper portion of the center aisle structure and they're gonna have some windows up in there too and so we're about done at the framing stage the guys are doing a great job so i just dropped off a few odds and ends materials that the guys that we're gonna need to kind of finish up the framing portion of this building and then um that'll be pretty much it till the sheets come in and then um we'll start working on that i think they have big plans they're gonna clean this building up pull all the unnecessary nails and boards kind of the boards that were tacked on since in the last 150 years or so and they're gonna end up I guess they call it chinking it but they're gonna put mortar it used to be mortar filled in between these cracks and over the over time I think something like this that's a rock but it might be clay yeah anyway they're gonna pour mortar in here and dress it up real nice and shore up the building and uh, it'll be a pretty cool feature so anyway I am unloaded here's the material I picked up just some extra purlin and some base angle and, and these are this is tubing for the garage doors they're gonna do two glass garage doors where these steps are so we're gonna frame those out for them and uh, let's step back so you can see it it's pretty cool I'm still rocking dad's truck uh, we should have my truck put back together this week should be a, have a video coming on that too but uh yeah it is cold out today a little breezy it's only 41 degrees 
but it's a little breezy kind of cuts through you a little bit um so not much work going on today like i said still rocking dad's truck we actually got to take this trailer back to the house load up with the hay trailer and then head to fredericksburg which is about an hour and a half run and then um once we do that we'll head back and i think i'm going to start hauling we got a, we got a bunch of hay to haul back to the house so i can sell out of the out of the house so i guess on our to-do list today is head back swap trailers load up with hay head to fredericksburg dump that get paid i'm gonna get paid for that one and then come back and uh probably haul the skid steer to one of our bigger patches where we have a bunch of hay to haul and uh, maybe do that tomorrow yeah i think that's what we'll do Yeah, so heading back from our uh, drop-off location of the hay. I didn't film loading or anything like that. Um, but yeah, we're in the hill country of Texas. Pretty hard pulling uh, for any vehicle. Uh, pretty steep grades and whatnot. It's a pretty drive, as you saw. Um, but I just wanted to chat with you a second. So I've been running Dad's truck, as you know, as I mentioned earlier. The 4500 is still torn apart. We should get it back together this week. But uh, I've been having, I've been struggling with a few fuel issues on this truck. And uh, at first we thought it was just fuel filters. So we got those all changed and uh, it seemed to be running good. And then I filmed the hay, uh, the, the how much does the hay weigh from the new baler kind of video. Uh, and it was pulling fine, like a freight train, um, like it should and so on and so forth. And then today on the way out here with all these hills in this, low to hay it started to act in kind of the same it was running better than the very first time we had an issue but it, it just didn't seem like it was all there uh you know as far as the horsepower or whatever the power needed to chug up these hills well i started thinking back about like what could it be and it all leans back on me filling up at the same pump station and so i you know i started thinking back the very first time i was on a full tank of fuel from the gas station that i'm talking about didn't think anything of it because we've gotten fuel there before changed the filters got it running good pulled that heavy load of hay got it running good well right after i scaled the last load it's at that gas station that i normally get fuel i filled up right after i scaled so it ran fine all the way back to the house i didn't run it all weekend and then this morning you know i was running around town seemed to be running fine wasn't pulling anything heavy i just had that 40 foot with a little bit of metal material and then uh, got back to the house, swapped trailers, loaded up this trailer, and then headed about out here in the hill country. And golly, man, I was like, nah, it, it was struggling. And uh, obviously it can't be fuel filters because we're brand new. Common occurrence. We filled up at that gas station. So we're starting to think that maybe we got some shoddy fuel from that gas station. And the only thing that made me think that from the get-go that we were starting to get shoddy fuel from this place is that halfway up here I needed fuel because it sucked it down like nobody's business yeah I burned a half a tank of fuel from my house 50 miles I burned a half a tank of fuel and that's un that's ridiculous and uh, so I filled up at a Valero halfway there and golly it woke it up like immediately after I put it topped off I put about 20 gallons in it 16 gallons in it and uh, the motor seemed to be running better, so I'm wondering if there isn't some going on with that pump over there, that fueling station. Um, and then, to top it even, you know, make me think even further back, we were having issues in our 4440, we're not running, or running low on power. We did do a fuel filter change, and it's been running fine ever since. But uh, it just makes me think, like, man, I wonder if we need to stop getting fuel from that joint. So... I don't know if this air filter needs to be changed on this truck and I'm sure there's other things we can do but for it to just for all the stars to line up after we buy fuel from that place as far as this truck not running that great it seems very peculiar very odd so be sure to do your research where you get fuel I'm not I'm not exactly blaming him but it's almost too good to be true that for that not to be the case so I'm going to avoid it for a little while and just see if the truck runs any better, get the air filter changed and see what it does and if it starts performing, it's already running better since I've put all that fresher fuel in, I'm going to call it fresher fuel, but yeah, it's crazy.
Crazy, crazy. We made it back. We made it back. We made it back. <laughs> And that's how it locks in. Here y'all can watch me load a hair trailer. the shop or here in the shed kind of clean it out organize it got everything stuffed in here rake cutter both bailers both tractors skid steer and uh, some other odds and ends implements and stuff like that so <clears throat> the wife and I actually when we we talked the other day right before we filmed our year-end video uh, where we're gonna put our next barn probably somewhere in here we need some space. Uh, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to expand our operation a little bit. Maybe do some more like brokering hay, things of the nature, so, some some stuff like that. More so in the square bell market. Um, got a lot of great, made a lot of great friends over the years out there in the hay world, and uh, like to do business with them. So <sighs> we're gonna start doing that. But first, we gotta get a place to store all this hay. Can't keep squares outside, not a quality hay anyway. And so that's number one. Um, the skid steer was bought for the Guadacoma side, but we have been using it quite a bit on the hay side. So that we have it here, I mean, it's pretty awesome, you know. Might as well use it while it's here, right? Good morning. Morning. Just got here in the old pickup truck. Letting her warm up a wee bit. And uh, we got a load going east. Talked about it yesterday. I'm gonna drop them off, and uh, then oh yeah, then we come back, load up to the flatbed, load the skid steer, and then we're going to Martindale uh, to unload and load up. And I got a buddy who's gonna help load some hay, so we are gonna be on top of it, on top of it. We got some hay to move. I'm out here. I've got one to 12, 13, 12 left here. That, that are available for sale so with the way it's going now we're starting to move quite a bit of hay so I need to restock so it's more convenient for me to load up plus that just gives us one less place to load out of so hopefully we can get a majority of it knocked out today and maybe all of it we'll see the fellow who helps me he's a little older so he doesn't uh, I mean, he's retired, basically, so he doesn't like to work too hard, but he always helps when he can, so we'll see how long we can make it, and then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. We are on the move again. We delivered uh, 20 bales, and it sounds like he might even buy more hay, so that was our second load to him. Uh, nice guy, likes the hay, so... Uh, I think you're bringing him more or his buddies more, I don't know, but uh, it sounded promising. But anyway, I already got back to the house, swapped trailers, loaded the skid steer, and we are almost to Martindale, Tejas, and um, you can see it here, just ripping, and I uh, just put it on the big flatbed so I can get 23 bales in one trip, we'll get back and unload it, and then we will hook up back up to the hay trailer, because we'll have the skid steer over here. And then we'll be able to make a few runs just shuttling hay back and forth real quick lack. So uh, that should be good.
know, the buddy who's helping me haul hay, he's got the same bale trailer. He just bought it a couple, probably a month ago, but he saw ours and liked it. So we got him one, and uh, we have been just getting after it. Not really, this is only our second load, but we'll probably get one more load and call it good for today, and hopefully maybe he'll have time tomorrow or sometime this week to where uh, I can uh, get the rest. We still have... After this load, we probably have four more loads left, so that'll get us pretty good and stocked up at the house, and then really all we have to worry about is selling our hay in San Marcos and then moving stuff back from Hallettsville, so um, this was this just needed to get done uh, to get it off the field and stacked in, a, in an orderly fashion so that we could uh, easily sell the stuff, so anyway, we're getting there. Well, we are just loaded up on our third load heading back to the house. We had a little snafu. Joe's got the same trailer I do, but uh, I don't know, was it last episode? We put the bars on there and you gotta have them because he lost two. He had them strapped, but the strap slipped off and he lost two bales right in front of the house. So I gotta go pick those up. Luckily, you know, things happen. But uh, to be truthfully honest, as much as these trailers cost, they should come with those bars so that they trap the bales in because in the back, there's no bars on his. And so they'll just fall right out. And he had it strapped, but it is what it is. So they fell off right on the farm to market road right outside of our, uh, right next to our house. And so uh, when I get back, I gotta put the spears on one of the tractors and, and go get it. But uh, we got a lot of stacking to do at the house. That's the only thing about these trailers is you can move hay from one place to another in a hurry, load it and unload it. But when it comes to stacking and making it neat, it just throws them everywhere. And so that's what I'll probably do the rest of the day is get everything that we haul today stacked and nice and neat. Uh, so we're ready to go again. Uh, we have three more trips, six total loads to get off of this uh, patch. And then uh, we'll be done. It is getting dry. It is getting dry. It's sprinkling on the windshield right now, but earlier we were getting sleet. And uh, this kind of rain, it doesn't amount to even a hundredth of an inch. It's just kind of gross. It's cold out. It's 50 degrees. And, uh, yeah, so we need rain. But also, I wouldn't mind if it didn't stay dry for a little bit longer just so we could uh, sell some more hay. So that's kind of where we're at. We still have plenty to sell. Alrighty, I found what I was looking for. Here's everything for this truck here, by the way. Here's all the rockers and push rods and fuel lines and all that fun stuff. <sighs> Valve cover, injector harm, we got a new one of those. All sorts of stuff. But I came in here looking for these pins for the uh, spears on the uh, 4440 because I need to go retrieve some fallen bales. They're not too far. One's pretty mangled up. One made it, surprisingly. Um, so, I got the tractor running. Yeah, I just got to find these pins. Because these pins are what hold the spears into the loader thingamajigger. Once you take the bucket off, there's holes to slide the spears in. So, just had to find those. I haven't used them in forever. And they were in the old truck. They're pretty mangled up, too. But, we, uh... We haven't used it in a while. Heck, we had the bucket on the tractor the whole season. So, here's all of our loads of hay. Pretty good day. Moved 120. 123 because I haven't unloaded the big trailer yet. So, 123. And we lost one. And if I, it depends on if I get the other one back too. But, uh, yeah. There are the spears laying in the grass. Don't want to lose these bad boys. Time to go bail chasing. 